Though you don't call anymore, I sit and wait in vain. I can sigh right on your door and tap on your window pane. I want to tell you, baby, changes I've been going through. Missing you, missing you. Till you come back to me. That's what I'm going to do. Why did you have to? Decide that you had to say, oh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, people. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, I'm going to do this story because not only, uh, I know it's Black History Month, the shortest month of the year, but I I'm going to honor somebody that I've been known since I was a child. And a lot of y'all know her too. And I was very surprised to find out that the connection with Roland Martin and her, because a lot of people from Chicago told me that Roland Martin ran her newspaper in the ground. And I'm like, what? This lady was like an aunt to me. She was like a grandmother to me, basically. That's what I should say. Well, her grandchildren and I were raised together, Monica and Angela, Douglas and Gerald Jones, and the, their mother, the wonderful, the great um, Mary Allen Shad, strong. Okay? Well, I, um, I wanted to do this and do her some justice this Black History Month, um, and this took this came from her passing. Uh, she's she's been gone now for about ten years. Uh, but for those of y'all who don't know Mary Allen uh, Shad, she's a very 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 prominent Black lady, and everybody should know her. Okay, in terms of media and um, Black media, especially because she was very much a pioneer. So Dr. Melly. Mary, Mary, Mary Ellen Strong, a Wisconsin media pioneer, um, passed away at 91 years old at her home in California on November 27, 19, I mean 2012. She was the first of many things in her lifetime. Uh, her homegoing celebrations were held in California and Atlanta. She was laid to rest in Atlanta, Georgia, next to her husband, Attorney James Strong. Strong made uh, California her home the past four years, where she assisted Pastor Diego Mesa at his mega church, Abundant Living Family Church in Rancho Cuchamonga, California. Pastor Diego wanted her to move there, for many years, and she finally accepted his offer four years ago. This is where the first home-going celebration took place for her on December 1st. Pastor Diego spoke of her many accomplishments. He cited her works with presidents, including John Kennedy, um, when she rallied black ministers to support him. He spoke on her many accomplishments in the business world and he shared how much of an influence uh, that she was on his ministry I thought she was just ain't married wow um, he shared how much of an influence that she was on his ministry and the accomplishments that she made with helping his church she first met Pastor Diego more than 25 years ago when he worked for a ministry that Dr. Strong often visited as a guest minister. He was led to start his own church in 1994, and it began in his home in Fontana, California. And soon after, he moved to an elementary school cafeteria. 
started with 12 members and has increased considerably. Um, in December, well, the church had moved to a 215,000 square foot property, including a 4,000 seat sanctuary um, and occupying 30 acres of land. The campus included a kindergarten through 12th grade, a Christian school, and a uh, ministry, school of ministry. Wow. Anyway, uh, you know, this is what get me. This is the part that I think is very important. Miss Dr. Strong lived a full life, and she was a woman who beat many odds. The following is just a snippet of her life accomplishments. In Milwaukee, she was the first publisher of the first Negro Business Directory, a publication that published from 1949 through 1950s. This comprehensive business directory was the first of its kind in Wisconsin. Um, uh, she later founded the Milwaukee Defender, the first black weekly newspaper in Wisconsin that was published until 1961. And I want y'all to hear this good because the de I, wa I was arguing with some people that the Defender started here in Milwaukee. And he was like, no, no, that's Chicago, that's Chicago. No, I know we neighbors uh, about an hour away between Milwaukee and Chicago. But the bottom line is um, maybe an hour and a half. Lady, she founded the Defender right here in Milwaukee, okay? And it was the first black weekly newspaper in Wisconsin. And that was published uh, until 1961. She picked up and moved to Chicago in the mid-60s and began working for the Chicago Courier, a black weekly newspaper founded by the late S.B. Fuller, the first black male self-made millionaire in the United States. And then we end up having a Milwaukee Courier. Uh, so like I said, she's her. She, a lot of integral parts about this woman is, is right here with her roots, in Milwaukee, uh, Strong was the marketing director of the newspaper. On one of her many accomplishments during her tenure there was being one of two women honored by the Chicago Chamber of Commerce with Businesswoman of the Year. The other woman was the late actress Jerome Crawford, who was working with Pepsi Cola at the time. Y'all remember that from Mommy Dearest. Y'all got to excuse me because I am really under the weather. Strong took her marketing experience and launched her own marketing company. Uh, the Welcome New Neighbor Service, Inc., a company that did door-to-door -door sampling in African-American neighborhoods throughout the United States. Strong company, Strong's company held contracts with corporations such as Sears, Roebuck, Purex, Kellogg's, Procter & Gamble. Her company traveled around the U.S. for weeks, and at times she hired locals to work a lot alongside her full-time traveling crew, and they went door-to-door -door in poor neighborhoods with samples from Kellogg's and Procter and & Gamble. She developed an investment banking program for black-owned banks where the large corporations that she worked with were encouraged by Stroll to make large deposits in the banks, a program that allowed these banks to establish corporate credibility. Uh, like I believe Milwaukee, North Milwaukee State Bank. Anyway, after years of seeing firsthand the deterioration of the black family, she was disturbed and it led her back into publishing. This time around a national magazine, Black Family Magazine. The focus of the magazine was to encourage the preservation of the black family unit. And with this in mind, she refused liquor and cigarette advertisement. The magazine set a standard 
that forced more established magazines aimed at the African American uh, audience to cut down on all that fluff and entertainment and develop deeper content. I love Mary. This is what we need today. She was definitely a pioneer. She spent her later years in the field of ministry and was sought after speaker in mega churches all across America. She even became a regular guest on the 700 Club for years. She made Atlanta her home many years ago, and it is where she wanted to return to be laid to rest. She is preceded in death by her oldest son, uh, Douglas. Well, his name is Jesse Douglas. And Jesse was married to, uh, God, what is her name? Jacqueline? Uh, I can see her now. Uh, Monica and Angela's mama. And survived by her son, Gerald Jones. Now, Gerald, y'all, owns WNOV here in Milwaukee. Um, and he is the uncle. Well, Laura Taylor been working for him for like 25 years. Laura Taylor is like the grandmother of, what's the little dude's name? Um, his daddy and him sang in a group. God, I'm losing my mind. Uh, Lattimore, the Lattimore brothers. Uh, Jacob Lattimore, little Jacob Jr., uh, anyway, she had a daughter named Carol Wright, and uh, she's got brothers. She had brothers, attorney Leonard Brady and Welton Brady. She also leaves behind grandchildren and great-grandchildren and one great-great-grandson. Rest in power, Mary Allen Shad. You are a person of my youth. A person who was a perfect example of uh, of perfection and true elegance in media, and I had no idea that Roland Martin ran your newspaper into the ground. In fact, that that really shocked me to to even hear that. They say he ran her new the newspaper into the ground. Anyway. For those of y'all who've heard of Mary Ellen, if you got a Mary Ellen story, why don't you leave it with me? Uh, like I said, this is a very important lady of my youth. I've been knowing her since I was a baby. And uh, I think her story is a good story to celebrate during Black History Month. And with that being said, this article was taken from the Milwaukee Courier, by the, by the way. And Linda Jones wrote the article. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.